Here is the audio version of stock valuation problems one through five. I'm not going to talk over all of them. Some of them I think are pretty intuitive. You got a good dose of plunking things into the Gordon model um, in the screencast. So I'm just going to voice over a couple of things. If you need this screencast, great. That's why I recorded it. If you don't and you're cool with the solutions that are posted, well, great. That's awesome. Number two, I'm just going to voice over um, briefly because I think it's pretty obvious how you plunk it all into the equation. So you can kind of get used to reading through um, things. Number two, I say calculate the price of a share of stock for each company given the information regarding dividends, the growth rate of dividends, and required rate of return. So five companies, current dividend per share, that's going to be D sub zero. Current, i.e. last dividend, most recent dividend, it's not the next or expected. So it's D sub zero since it's the current. The growth rate is G. The required rate of return is R sub S. Now you can plunk it into the Gordon equation and solve for the different prices. Notice that as you do so, when you look at company four or five, you can have zero or negative growth rates, and the equation works fine. Does that happen? Sure. There are downturns, there's bad years. That does happen on occasion. Number three, Elaine's stockbroker is trying to sell her a stock with a current market price of $25 a share. The stock's next dividend will be $2.15 and earnings and dividends are expected to increase at a constant growth rate of 10%. Elaine's required rate of return is 20%. How does that correlate for a second before we solve this with that 10% growth rate? Notice a 10% growth rate is probably pretty um, optimistic, quite high. Does that always occur? Sometimes, sure. Um, if a growth rate is that high, it you know over time it, it might lead to maybe it's a little riskier stock. Not necessarily though. Everything's subjective with stock valuation. So notice it does higher growth rate does correlate with a higher required rate of return. Your question is, what advice do you have for Elaine? Well, you need to find the true value of the stock before you can advise her on whether or not she should buy it. So the stock's next dividend, next dividend is $2.15, that's D sub 1. Okay, so in our equation, when we have the next dividend, we use D sub 1 divided by R, S, or R sub S minus G to find our intrinsic value. So $2.15 divided by 0 0.20 minus 0 0.10 equals $21.50. That's the true value. That's the intrinsic value for the stock. The price, the market price is $25. It's more than the true value you just found. So it's essentially overpriced. She should not buy it. Question four. I have Kruger Industrial Smoothing, and their last dividend was $1.50. Their current equilibrium stock price is $15.75. What does that mean? Well, you learned in your textbook when you read about market prices and intrinsic values that when they're equal, that the stock is selling um, at its equilibrium. The equilibrium price, meaning where the market price would equal, the true value is $15.75, the growth rate is 5%, and the stockholder's required rate of return on average is 15%. I ask you to find the expected dividend yield, the expected capital gains yield, and you could also find with that information the total return, which is the same as R sub S. These equations um, dividend yield and capital gains yield are mentioned in your textbook, and they're also on the equation sheet for this chapter as well. Dividend yield is D sub 1, which would be the next dividend, divided by P sub 0. What if you don't have the next dividend? Well, if you don't, you can find it by taking D sub 0 times 1 plus the growth rate, and that's what I've done for you here. 1575 would be our price. That's our equilibrium price, intrinsic value, current price, 
put it all together and you should find the dividend yield is 10%. The capital gains yield can be found by taking the future price, the expected price, minus the current price, divided by the current price. And that's basically saying you know, if you can sell the stock in one year, if you hold it for one year, what is that return you would see if you sold it in one year given what you paid for it today? And to find the expected price in one year, it's just P sub 0 times 1 plus the growth rate. We minus the current price, divide by the current price. Here it is all plumped into the equation, and you find that that's 5%. You learned a little bit about R sub S as part of being part of the Gordon model. You can also solve for R sub S by flipping the model around. And you see that in your textbook and you get a chance to do some problems like that in your textbook. Notice that R sub S, the required rate of return is how we refer to it, is also expressed as total return and it can equal the dividend yield plus the capital gains yield. And if I would have asked you what that total return was, you could have just put everything together and solved for R sub S, or in a situation like this, just put together your dividends yield and capital gains yield and found the 15%. Problem number five. Putty Incorporated stock is expected to pay a dividend of $2.25 Expected to pay means it's the next dividend to be paid, so that's your D sub 1. It's going to be paid at the end of this year. The dividend is expected to grow at a constant rate of 4% a year. That's your growth rate. Investors require a rate of return of 11%. That's your R sub S. What's the expected price of this stock five years from today? So first, find the price now. Find P sub 0 given what you have in the problem. So you can put that together in our Gordon model and you should find it's $32.14. On your equation sheet I made available to you, I gave you this equation. Um, where I think the equation as I laid it out for you states P sub n equals P sub 0 times 1 plus the growth rate to the power of n. And that's the expected future stock price equation, and it's just kind of taking a piece of the Gordon model out of the Gordon model um, and solving for a piece of it. The math behind the Gordon model makes it useful in so many respects with stock valuation, and that's what we're doing here. So given the price today, you just found $32.14, you can take that times 1 plus the growth rate to the fifth power because we're looking at the stock price in five years. That's what we did here. $39.10. And that's it for this screencast. I'm going to go through six problems 6 through 8 with my non-constant growth screencast, which you could watch following this one.